Hey, it's Jag. OMG. WTF. 23 skidoo. What he said. All right, well, disaster has struck. Uh, first of all, everything's fine for the GGBO build. No problem there. Uh, but uh, today, it's Friday, October 7th. Uh, as I said in my last video, I probably wouldn't be able to get out here to shoot until today. And uh, that, that was my plan. Uh, and uh, then something else happened. So I have not been able to shoot at all today. So I'll... I'll lay it out for you. We went to our favorite uh, off-grid uh, getaway for about a week uh, last week. Um, and um, that was all great. No bears this time. Well, that we saw. There were bears. When we got back this past Monday, and I was unpacking and putting things away, uh, went down into the uh, electronics shop, which also is a place where I keep my hiking gear and, and whatnot. And uh, we had a flood. Um, our water was turned off. Uh, we always turn it off when we go away. And we did have uh, someone come by and, and check the place out. Actually, uh, they noticed a little bit of uh, dampness on a, uh, a mat up in the, in, the, in the kitchen, but thought it was caused from something else. Somewhere in the, in the draining line, or maybe in the infeed lines, um, even though the water was turned off, there was still water in the infeed lines. Although when I turned the water back on, there's not water spraying out everywhere. So that's pretty unlikely. So it's probably something to do with the draining system. It's not a, a, a sewage backup or anything because we have a, a shower in the basement and a laundry room in the basement, both of which would have uh, flooded before anything else. I mean, the kitchen sink is upstairs. So this water came from the kitchen, leaked in a cabinet under the sink. So there's some damage there. Uh, it ran off down the walls and damaged uh, our, our back entryway. Uh, but the, by far, the worst part of the damage is my electronic shop, which is directly below the kitchen. It went through the electrical box. Uh, uh, oddly enough, the insurance adjuster says, uh, says that's not really, really a big issue. They're made to take that. Who knew? Um, at any rate, speaking of insurance adjusters, uh, he was out uh, yesterday. And, and our claim has been approved. So uh, at least insurance is covering this. I don't know what all they're going to uh, cover, uh, but they are covering it. So uh, that's good. Um, so that has kept me from shooting today. It's going to probably tie up a lot of my time over the next month or two, uh, which puts a little bit in jeopardy whether I'll actually get the GGBO build done by the end of October like I was hoping. I thought that I would be able to do a big chunk of work today, uh, tomorrow, Saturday, and then Monday, it's Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend. Um, obviously, I didn't get out here today, and uh, I'm dealing with... Uh, issues with the electronic shop, it's going to need to be completely gutted and completely rebuilt. So I spent all last night uh, moving everything that wasn't water damaged, everything that was recoverable, everything that was going to be okay out of there, including taking cabinets off the walls and moving the furniture and this. And I actually didn't lose a whole lot of uh, equipment or furniture or things down there. I got pretty lucky. I'll show you some video of that, of that later where, and I'll describe what I did lose, but I had to move everything out because they're going to demo that room. And uh, there's a lot of stuff in there. I cannot believe uh, how much stuff uh, can be stored in one small room like that. Uh, Salem, of course, was was here and, and helping with that. And our drummer, Todd Pretty, uh, came over last night. Uh, thanks so much, Todd. Todd helped me take the cabinets down. We moved them into another room, uh, actually, where I edit the videos and stuff. That was enough work for yesterday. And then today I got up and had to take all of the stuff that we had piled into our rehearsal slash workout room area uh, back into those cabinets uh, in, in my editing room. Uh, so that's what I've done all day. Tomorrow I'll probably edit this stuff together and then we're of course doing the family thing. So uh, I'm going to need Sunday off. So that means Monday I'm hoping I will get out here 
uh, in the shop to do some work on the GGBO. Our house is over 50 years old. Because of the age of the house, they've got to check for asbestos in the materials here. So we have uh, somebody coming to do that on Monday. Uh, they're going to check the drywall, the adhesives for the floor tiles. The floor tiles are curling up in there and uh, underneath I saw that is the old black adhesive and I went, yeah, asbestos. <laughs> so I don't know for sure, but that's a pretty strong indicator. And according to the uh, the insurance, uh, the construction company, the insurance uh, has, has sent, uh, the demolition is going to begin on Tuesday. Uh, and then they have to dry it out down there. We'll have the plumber look at that and then they'll dry everything out. Let us know what the environmental assessment is on the asbestos thing. And uh, I'm not sure what they're going to uh, actually completely take out and, and completely repair. And if there's anything going to be left up to me. Uh, basically, it's the one far back wall, the whole ceiling, and all of the flooring is completely trashed. So i got to see what they're going to do. I may see about taking the cash payout and renovating that myself, which would then become my first of the winter project, because I can't do any electronics in there right now either. And that way I can get that room redone the way I want. Um, it, it's a mixed blessing. I mean, I, I did lose some equipment, uh, about two, three thousand dollars worth of equipment. Um, that will be covered, which is fine. I had uh, uh, a 67 vintage 67 Fender Champ sitting in there that was trashed in that. Uh, may or may not be recoverable. I'll talk about that a little bit later when I go down into the uh, the shop and show you what's happened. Well, I was just wrapping up uh, and I forgot, uh, I don't know how I forgot, but uh, the, the, to me, uh, the biggest uh, victim of that uh, flood is the original neck to Butch. Uh, unfortunately, the neck was lying actually flat on the floor uh, down there. I had been looking for something before we left and I had set it down there and forgot to pick it up and put it away. So it was on the floor and sat in the soaking water and uh, I never really did like this neck a whole lot. It's, it's pretty narrow, which has had the neck that I do like on it since uh, probably a year after I got Butch. So I never really liked the neck. It, it does kind of, it feels nice. It's a very, uh, a very round C shape. It's just very narrow. So it was always really difficult for me to play chords on it because my fingers are so big. And uh, the headstock has been sanded and kind of reshaped and then painted over. So not really a, a big loss anyway. But uh, just from the point of view of it being Butch's original neck, this paint that had been just, that was rattle can paint. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, there it's starting to bubble off. Uh, and uh, there's a split there. And uh, the fingerboard is... Uh, starting to uh, delaminate. There's a, a ridge here uh, where I think the uh, the maple has swollen more than the rosewood. Truss rod is rusted. Um, the neck is now, I don't know if you can see that, it's warped. So uh, that's a done neck. Oh, you can see all of this back here too, really ugly staining and whatnot. And the skunk stripe is delaminating too, I just noticed. So that is the other uh, the, the most sad uh, victim of it. Uh, as I say, I didn't play this neck. Uh, I didn't really have an intention of putting it on a guitar, but still sad to see it get damaged. So anyway, that's the big tale of woe. I'm sure there's a bunch more I could, uh, could talk about, but it is what it is. Uh, so hoping to get back out here on Monday and do some shooting. Um, on to some, some, really uh, happy, cool, nice things. This off-grid cabin that we stay at uh, out, out in the Kootenai Mountains in BC, um, I have a friend, a very old friend I've known for a very long time, who uh, lives in a town about an hour from where we, we, we stay. And uh, she owns a, a, an antique shop, and I have never been to that shop. I hadn't seen her for a while, so Salem and I went, went out to visit her, and uh, I went, we were looking through her shop, which is massive, and lots of really cool stuff. And of course, there are always old tools in there. So I got excited, and yeah, I found a, uh, a Stanley 78, uh, Philister plane. 
Uh, really cool. Uh, it's it has dual function. It does the uh, it can do the rabbits here, and also has a bull bull nose. So it's it's like a dual um, a dual plane with the uh, standard cutter and the bull nose. It's in really good shape, and all the parts are there. I don't know how much I'll use it, but it just it looks. I mean, these tools look so good, you know, and it was not uh, not that expensive and in such good shape. So I got that. And then as I was looking, she had a complete Stanley 50 combination plane. Everything is there just like it would have been uh, back in the day when it was sold. Um, I've dated this to between 1942 and 1962, and that's basically based on the rosewood handle. That's when they started putting the rosewood handle on these. But everything is here. Uh, you can see it's got the fence, it's got the depth stops, uh, it's, it's in excellent shape. None of the nickel has come off. There is no rust anywhere on this. Well, sorry, there's a little bit of rust on the guide rails for the fence, but the actual um, nickel plating on the cast iron is completely intact. This piece is in such good shape and I, I probably will use this uh, even so, these are just great conversation pieces. And like I say, it came with everything. It came with the full set of cutters. The instructions are in there. There's the cutters. These cutters actually, they don't look like they've been used at all. When I was looking at this, there's one cutter. Uh, the quarter inch cutter looks like it's been been sharpened. So I think whoever had this, this, uh, this uh, plane only ever used used it for that quarter inch cutter and, and maybe once or twice this thing is in fantastic shape all the parts are here there's all these little parts there's this extra little step uh depth stop or skate i'm, I'm not sure uh there's uh, another depth stop on it um uh right here a smaller depth stop then there's there's this one even the uh extra uh, uh parts the uh the chip remover and these screws I don't remember what they're all for but apparently these are almost always missing this is absolutely complete all the cutters the instructions um, the uh, even even the uh, the the labeling for the cutters that I think originally would have been glued on here uh, but it's it's come loose and even the original uh, the original box so a really cool find something something <laughs> To, to look at and be happy about this week. Uh, I've been a little bit bummed about that uh, that flooding. Uh, and so back to that, uh, I'll head down to the to the, the electronic shop and and show you what I what I can down there. So I just thought I'd let you guys uh, have a look at uh, the state the electronic shop is in now. Um, as I said, I spent uh, most of today and a lot of last night. Uh, getting everything out of here, so it's it's empty now. This is where my my workbench usually was, and where I would usually uh, film my my electronics videos, and the, the cameras would come from that way. Um, so I had a, a an upper cabinet over here, and a cabinet here, and another one in the corner over here, and down here. Those were fine. Um, the water, the kitchen is directly above the shop. And you can see the ceiling tiles are coming down, have come down. Um, that's uh, from up in the kitchen. That's where the leak was. Um, not too much really damage up in the kitchen at all. A, a little bit to the bottom of the cabinet. I'm not exactly sure what they're going to actually repair and replace. I just know they're going to be doing stuff in here. Demolition starts on Tuesday. Um, they have uh, uh, some sort of an environmental engineer coming here on Monday. There's a possibility we've got asbestos in here too. So they're going to check for asbestos in the adhesives and in the, uh, the drywall and whatnot. Hopefully we don't have any, but if we do, it's another thing we probably have to figure out a way to deal with. I think if you don't disturb it, you're okay. Uh, it's just there's going to be disturbing in here because they're going to uh gut this room uh and what they aren't going to do i am going to do so this whole thing is going to be gutted and renovated that's the electrical panel uh right there the water went right through that and they said that's not really actually a problem <laughs> so okay the floor tiles I'll, I'll get my my iphone too and 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 film some of this but the floor tiles are all curling up and cracked and they buckled uh, back here at the back wall this this wall is still really wet I could probably put my hand right through this wall um, this is just some really old paneling 
And what you can't see is all down here, this wall has buckled. Uh, there's a big uh, bulge out here, another bulge out here. Um, if I look down, down the side of the wall, I can see, see that. Oh, I didn't even notice there's a massive one down here. But as far as some um, equipment and things like that were, that were damaged, it really, uh, I, I got away pretty lucky with that. I mean, yes, this whole wall, the ceiling, the floor, they're trashed for sure. And I don't know what's going to happen with the side walls or the back wall as far as the insurance claim. Uh, but if they're doing this, I'm going to probably tear this out and do it myself or uh, at least uh, fill holes and paint this. I mean, this is original wood paneling from like 50 years ago, right? So this is really a utility room. So we didn't really do much to this room. Again, as far as equipment and things that got lost, um, the my printer uh, is, is toast. Uh, my backup drive enclosure and three of the backup drives are, are, are toast. I'm really big on backups, so I actually didn't lose anything uh, with that because I have redundant backups as well and they were all safe. Uh, so no data loss or anything. I lost uh, that computer. That is just a little Windows 10 computer that I use for, for testing things. There was nothing uh, super important on it. it. It just wasn't that old. So uh, printer computer backup drives um, and um, I had a 67 champ was sitting right under where the where the the flow of water was too I'll show you a picture of that and as you can see the 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 whole front baffle just crumbled and and, and fell apart um, the um, the cabinet itself is in pretty good shape probably can salvage that amp. Uh, we'll see what the insurance people say, um, whether they have to have it now or not. Um, I may just say, take it out of the claim and, and I'll keep it. I've looked at it. The cabinet itself is in pretty good shape. The sides, uh, because that, that front panel was particle board, that swelled uh, before it eventually just gave way and crumbled. And it, it pushed the front sides of the, the cabinet out. So. And, and of course, those sides were damp, so you can see that it's flared out at the front a bit. I, I'm not sure if I can do anything with that. Um, I might have to just make a cabinet for it. So the chassis was out of the amp, sitting on top of it, and was directly under a shelf, which I think probably acted like an umbrella uh, or something like that. So that looks okay there. I also had um, un under uh, that same shelf uh, three or four uh, mid 60s uh, champ circuit cards those are toast when those things get wet they get conductive and you're, you're basically done I suppose I could probably try and bake them in the oven but they're not really uh, uh, recoverable they're all they're they're in rough shape okay so here we are uh, there's that shelf I was talking about that was uh, kind of may have shielded that chassis and uh, you can see that's the side that was up I mean that is just ugly and trashed uh, you can see uh, there's still moisture on the on the floor over here. I don't know how far the water went. Uh, same with uh, uh, the tiling in our laundry room, which is right outside this this door. Those tiles are all curly. That's part of the insurance claim, though, and that that will probably be covered. Some of the tiles have come up. There weren't tiles here, but you can see one came up there, and that black adhesive. That's the thing. Right away when I saw that, I went, mm, "That could be an asbestos issue," and that was the first thing the insurance adjuster said too when he came down. And then you know more tiles came. All of these tiles I could just pick up. Uh, so you can see as we get back toward the back of the shop, it's really messy here. You can really see uh, sort of what happened, more tiles coming up. Uh, the interesting thing, this printer has always sat on this little kid's uh, play table for a long time. And, and you can see it's split and it's, it's warped. So a lot of water, even though the printer was on top of it, a lot of water managed to pool in there. Uh, and that thing is coming apart. Um, so basically all of this stuff here is sort of the extent of my equipment loss and damage other than that champ. Uh, all of my internet, my security equipment, my routers, our VoIP system, everything is up here. And you can see this shelf warped, this shelf warped. 
Um, I can clearly see that that, that got water, uh, but all of it is working fine. So that's great. And the good thing about this is that was just kind of thrown up there. This house was designed before. There was internet and VoIP phones and all of that. So there was never any accommodation for putting that kind of thing here. So that's just always been up on those shelves. So this will be my opportunity to at least make that corner look nice. Maybe you can see if you look down the wall here. Nah, it's not really showing up. Yeah, there, you can kind of see there's a, there's a, let's get my finger in here. There's a bulge right there. There's another bulge right here, uh, right up there. You can kind of see that bulging out. And there's a massive one uh, down over here uh, behind this stuff uh, right there. That's the framing has kicked that out. So we probably have some framing issues there as well. Up here, you can see water staining here. Water came down. It's an old panel. I mean, this is a 50-year-old house. Anyway, um, I don't know how long all this is going to take. As I say, the, um, uh, the, the, the environmental guy, the guy checking for asbestos is here on, on Monday. Uh, today's Friday. Uh, so he'll do, uh, be taking samples and doing tests of that. Uh, supposedly demolition of the room is scheduled for Tuesday and then they have to dry everything and see if the framing goes back to, to normal and, and whatever so they know the extent of what they have to do for repair. And I haven't heard yet um, what the extent of the repairs uh, is going to be. Once all the cleanup is done, and everything is torn down to the to the to the bare bones here. I may take the cash payout on that and and redo this myself my way because uh, I have I will have a little more control over that. Um, we'll see. I'll see what the insurance is going to uh, to cover on that. Um, if I end up doing that, um, it will be a, a, a video series for sure this winter because it's going to tie into everything I have planned to do, at least for the start of the winter. Uh, once I get the GGBO uh, done, the next thing I was going to do was design and build that uh, two bass recording preamp uh, for my brother. Uh, the two plus one I'm still going to do, but I'm going to do it as my, my cold winter project, January, February, March. Uh, that kind of thing. Um, the 2 plus 1, why I was going to do it initially at the same time as the GGBO, and then I said, well, I'd do it after the GGBO this fall now, um, was that my brother was going to be getting one of those, um, uh, one of the two Jagsters. Uh, the plus one is going to be a pedal platform amp, which I'll keep, and the other one is going to Salem, the other Jagster. The reason that I pushed that one back is my brother, we, I had talked with him years ago about building him a, a, a tube-based uh, preamp uh, for, for bass guitar, for, for DI and, and recording. He does a lot of session work and he was really interested in that. And he brought that up again and he said, you know, rather than having a guitar amp that, that can work for bass practice and stuff, I would rather have uh, that preamp. So I went, yeah, that's that's a great idea. I had started designing it, I guess about 14 years ago, and I even have a bunch of parts. I, ha I <laughs> When I was going through all of this, I came across a box that, that said base preamp for, for my brother. So I had already done some work and, and gotten some parts and things like that. So I'll break that out, look at it, see what kind of redesigning I might need to do on that and what I'm going to do about that. So that will be the next thing I do after I finish the GGBO build. Um, <coughs> but um, I, sh I guess I should say that will be what I do when I can get back in here. Uh, I really can't do the electronics work somewhere else. There's too much stuff to set up. So I can't, I don't want to set that up somewhere else in the house. I can't set it up in my my garage because I don't have heat out there and it's, it's even now it's getting too cold to do that kind of fine work. So that base preamp will probably come along after whatever it takes to get this room functional again. So after the GGBO or, or at maybe even during finishing the GGBO build, you'll probably see some videos of stuff going on in here as well. Like always, uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Um, sorry I didn't have any GGBO work today. Hopefully I'll have some for next, uh, next Friday. Um, I really appreciate you guys uh, watching my videos, sharing my videos, uh, giving the likes. The likes really help a lot. So if you watch a video, 
If all you can do is take that second to click the thumbs up, I'd really appreciate that. Um, I also really appreciate, I know that there are certain of you who are going to be communicating with me on, on the YouTube comments once you see this video. And um, I really appreciate all you guys' uh, support and, and all of the, um, the help I've gotten from you. So, like I say, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And, <laughs> and we'll see you in the next video. You heard that little skittering chick, 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 chick sound. That was this, uh, this little uh, chicken. It, it's a little uh, uh, chicken uh, candle that um, Salem and I have had for years. And he turns up uh, just to cheer us up whenever something's going on. Uh, you know, when we need some cheering up or just to say, hey, how are you doing? And uh, um, he's been out a lot this week. And so Salem knew us down here uh, shooting and uh, she set the chicken free. So that's what that noise was. So again, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.